It's like as black students, not just film students, we have a, a higher pedestal to reach. You have to be good at what you do, even as a freshman. And if you make any little mistake, they'll dismiss you and say, you know, she won't make it to next semester. And to add on, not only do you have to reach that pedestal, but you're going to have to do it by yourself. Or you're going to have to do it with little support of the faculty because they're not taking any time to understand where you're coming from what it is that you want to say or what stories you're trying to tell about people that look like you. So not only do you, you have to, um, your, your work has to be above and beyond for your student body to even, you know, to put you on the same level as them. We are the black sheep. And I just feel like I'm automatically dismissed in my classes or in my one class in particular, my mid one class, um, with like comments that I have and like critiques and like ideas, like stuff like that. And um, I try to be pretty, you know, objective, like, oh, okay, so this is what they were going for, you know, and I try to be constructive with everything that I say, but usually it's just like, you know, they perceive it as, oh, it came from the black girl. I have to prove that I can do other things besides just like, sit on my butt and tell people what to do. So I have to let other people know that I, I know how to like, I know how to put something on the C-stand, I know how to edit, I know how to, you know, do everything. So when I go out into the real world after I graduate, I'm not a one trick pony. I, I can do anything that, you know, Joe Schmo can do. He might be a white man, so. We're just, we're just passionate people, that's what it is. And this, me acting like this, has made people in my class um, feel uncomfortable sometimes just by, if I happen to raise my voice a little bit louder because I'm trying to get you to understand my point, they'll be like, oh my God, the mad black woman. And it's like, no, I'm trying to explain to you, you could do the same thing, homie. I'm not gonna be like the mad white man. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah. And I really don't want to believe, but I always wonder that if I had come in here in a different, skin in a different gender, I don't know if that would have been the same case. I think that talent would have been cultivated and would have been supported. Uh, especially, I teach in the um, freshman curriculum and the foundations curriculum, and I will say frankly, I think we could do a lot better. Students of color are saying that they're not seeing their experiences in themselves represented on the screen. Um, and I think that's absolutely true. Like when you look at the films that we screen. Honestly, I think the school is fine. I think that the school does a really good job with cultural events and things of that nature. I think the film department itself, because I can only talk about the film department, I was a film major. Um, I think they can do a lot. I think. I don't know why, but I think they choose not to. But there are certain um, there are certain filmmakers they just don't want to talk about. Um, you know, if if a black filmmaker comes up, it's like Tyler Perry or or Spike Lee. It was like they didn't expose us to anything of black, like ex except Tyler Perry, not Tyler Perry, um, Spike Lee. Mm -hmm. And I miss the day that they screened that too. I'm like I already seen it a million times. Yeah. I don't even know too many besides like John Singleton, Tyler Perry, Spike Lee. Like Do the Right Thing is like the black movie to show. And it's like not the only black movie. That's why I love my black independent cinema class because there's so many movies that I have not seen, have not heard of. It's a movie called Nothing But, um, Nothing but a Man. And it's supposed to be like the best black independent film to date. I had never heard of this film until 2013. I've been in Columbia for years. There's no reason why I should have been introduced to this now, which I've seen do the right thing like a million times before I got here. So I'm like, hmm. Columbia College, put, I put the camera in face. Columbia College, there are more black directors than Spike Lee. 
Thank you. And Tyler Perry. Born in Tyler Perry, too. They talk about who? Like Tyler Perry. Yeah, like the, the t- Tyler Perry, Spike Lee. These are the only, only black, black filmmakers. Know, right? And then you have, and the, the fact that Tyler Perry's name doesn't need to be discussed at a film school. Not fact, at all. Um, Not at all. No. You know, the fact that it is. Um, <laughs> don't a- edit that out because I'm going to have to work nah, for man, him. Nah, man, let's be real. While cinema history is relevant and the industry has been a whitewashed industry for years, that we can, with our curriculum, like kind of fight against that a little bit and show an alternate picture. I feel that Columbia's film program, as nice as it is and as uh, available as they make their resources towards the students, I feel like uh, what uh, they allow to be portrayed to the other students in the film um, is biased and it's whitewashed. Uh, because that's all I see. Whenever I'm watching uh, a short film by a student at Columbia, it's usually something white, something with off-color humor. And I feel like our ideas are not well represented in the school. Like, they, they put on a guise uh, as uh, this school that shows change and, and difference, but in reality, that's, that's the ironic part about it, is they're not different. They're not changing anything. I don't know about the other departments and how they, you know, how they treat it or how diversity is there, but definitely in film, I don't see too many black or in color like films or that being embraced. Um, just like they're saying at the round table, like you don't see too many like films of black culture in take one, the film festival that they have or the, or the whatever they call it. When I went to that take one film festival, I saw like no real Chicago in any of those films. They went up north and they, they were like these love films and like funny, quirky, you know, weird films. But like that's not, that's Chicago, that's a piece of Chicago. That's like 13%. Where, where's the rest of Chicago? Where's the rest of the world? You know? When I watch my peers work and see how amazing it is and in my perspective, seeing that some of these films are better if not or on par with the ones that typically make it in take one and, you know just just got to a reason like man you know there's so many talented black artists out here and putting talented black um actors and actresses on screen that the school is not getting an opportunity to recognize and embrace and so i felt like you know we had to create our own festival you know our own student film festival in order to do that so that's why we came up with within our Gate Student Film Festival, it felt like we were receiving, um, I don't know, some of the, so a form of like rejection from the school, like they really didn't wanna support it. Um, it's student work that were made primarily within the constraints of these classes, so, you know, we, you know, we invited everybody, you know, all the, all the faculty to come out and check it out. We didn't get any faculty support, and not one faculty member showed up to this festival. Graduate students, we had like an opening reception the week before school started, and they showed us a reel of all this student work that like grad students had did either for thesis or for like their final projects for the first year. And in none of these films, there was no representation of something that looked like me. And I think that's a problem because because there are way too many black students in like both the producing and the directing programs for those films not to represent who is there. Because it's, I mean, the, the graduate program that's very diverse. Yeah, but we, we have crazy. our issues. Yeah. Like, one of my friends who just filmed her thesis, um, I remember when she was writing this thing and everything because it's based off of some true events. Her graduate thesis advisor um, told her not to ghetto size her work. These two girls that are in this script are two educated black women. What's ghetto about it? And to me, what, and honestly, what does ghetto even mean to you? What do you even know about that word? I shouldn't have to go out and do double the work to get this education. That's wrong. It's not fair. And this place should be fair to every artist that it invites to be a part of the school. 
it was of this overweight black lady who gets out of jail and she becomes a lunch lady you know and and she in the in the in the movie ends with her doing the cabbage patch and i'm and you know and i'm like if this is if this is what this is the and, the, and they lauded as this is the first practicum starring an African American, and I'm thinking if if this is what I have to look forward to, I have no future in this program. You know, I'm just gonna get a degree and leave. My name is Linda Garcia Merchant, and I was a first year student, MFA student in film and video in 2008. So I knew that I wanted to teach at some point, and I knew that I needed to get a degree to do that. Um, and so when I applied to Columbia, it was because I really liked the idea that, or at least as it was presented, was that the MFA program could teach storytellers how to do it with film. My phone rings, I answer it, and it's Columbia. And they said, the person on the phone said, we really like what you're doing with your film production company. We'd like you to be a first year, and we're going to offer you the Follett Fellowship. That's the top prize, to come to this school. It's given to students who demonstrate an exceptional talent. And we all think, including myself, because I'm given this fellowship, because it, you know, it happens so quickly, the decision is so quick to include me as a first year, that there is a willingness to work with me to make this happen. And so to walk into that review and hear that we're going to ask you to leave because this is not a good fit and we've taught you all that we can teach you made no sense to me. And my only response was, but I want to teach. A lot of the faculty, they're limited on their understanding of black art in a sense and black story and because of their foreignness to it, they don't know how to critique it, they don't know how to give us what we need and yet we're paying the same amount of money as the next person to come here and yet we're receiving less. There's not, there's very few black professors, you know, outside of Von Monroe you know, he's the only black professor I've had in the film department since I've been here, and the only, the only professor from artistic level that I feel has understood some of the things where I'm coming from. I'm, I'm the only um, tenure-track black male professor in, the, in uh, the department's history. So, and this is for, you know, it's for the largest film school in the world. If you look around, you find there's there's not that many um, not that many black professors, male or female. There are, a lot, there are a lot of teachers that may not be comfortable with black people, just like some of us aren't comfortable with white people. I think it takes a mutual effort from both sides to come to some medium, and I think that 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 is what I'm here for. That's what I came here for. I think having more um, more black um, professors, more Latino professors. I mean, it's not just a black thing. It's about everybody um, having a voice and having, when you have black professors, that's the power for the black students because that's somebody that you can connect with on a professional level. So if I see more of my my face in a position of power, then I know that, oh, okay, I can do that too, you know what I mean? And it gives you a little more hope being in this program. I don't need challenges about culture. I need answers about process. Maybe some diversity traded for like the teachers too. Cause like if the teachers are, you know, just as ignorant as some of these students coming in, like, you know, you can't expect them to be open-minded. That reminds me of um, just, just how, how easy it is as, as a student to to lose trust in your professor when they can't relate. So it doesn't even matter if 
my professor is giving me great information or great critique, I can't believe him because he can't relate to me. I think what's, what's critical to the success of this program for students of color is the opportunity to create safe spaces to have those honest conversations. I think this school could do better in recruiting and retaining black faculty in full-time positions. I think it's just we underestimate sometimes how important it is just to have, for students to have somebody that they relate to in the classroom. And um, I know that as a female teacher, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from students that are just like, I'm so glad my teacher was a woman. Like female teacher, you know, female students just saying, I'm so glad I have a woman as my teacher. Just makes me feel more comfortable with the gear. Just makes me feel like I can learn it. I'm not so intimidated. And I think you can extrapolate that out. I think we need like just more diversity in the faculty. Well, let me say this. Um, if you look around, you will find that uh, more and more, there are black faculty members, faculty members of color, who are saying that there is um, there's a quality to the tenure process that is unfair to faculty of color. Um, that unfairness quotient is not intended, uh, but it is there, and I found it to be there as well. But I think you need full-time faculty who are going to be here to advise organizations like yours, to make work here. Um, I think that's important for all students, not just black students. I think some people need to, <laughs> need to relate to people who look like them, and some people need to learn how to relate to people who don't look like them, and that that's better for all of us. It was one particular time in, in my foundations class um, where you get to pitch a documentary, so it's maybe like a room full of like 30 kids, and you get to pitch a documentary. Um, and I had pitched a documentary about a teenage girl who had lost her boyfriend and like gang violence going on in Chicago, and it was kind of like at the height of that. Um, and I had pitched it, and I thought it was like a really good idea. Um, but uh, you're supposed to get paired with somebody that has a like-minded idea as you do so I was told that my idea had not gotten picked so I'm thinking I'm going to be you know partner with somebody with the same type of idea but I actually got partnered with a guy that was doing a documentary about ferrets. It's good but it isn't. I should but I shouldn't. I can but I can't. You know art is equal. All art is equal. What I want to produce is just as important and has just as much value as what any other student wants to produce because it's my art. There shouldn't be any question. And there was always a question. I co-taught a class with um, a colleague, Fawn Monroe, who is one of two um, full-time black professors in the department um, and he taught the screenwriting part I taught the production part and partway through the semester I felt like students were coming to me with a lot of questions that were like well that's a Vaughn question that's a Vaughn question that's about your screenplay that's I mean I can look at it but uh, when is that due <laughs> that, that's a Vaughn question and um, one of them just said, kind of casually, like, yeah, but, you know, he's so scary. And I was like, okay, um, what does he do <laughs> that is scary? Like, could you explain that to me? Um, and they all just kind of smirked and blushed. And one of them said, like, well, you know, he's just, he's big, and he's a big black man, he's kind of scary. And I was just like, well. They said that. You might want to think about that, <laughs> some of the assumptions you have. Because um, I don't know him that well, but I think he's kind of a pussycat. You know, I ask my students, I, I would usually, it doesn't matter what the class is, I will ask my students, have you ever had a black male professor in your life before? 
almost most of the time the answer is no. Um, and many of the times when the answer is yes, it's because the students have taken my class. I remember um, I was lecturing in class one time for um, foundations and you know, was given some information and a student just stood up in the middle of the lecture and shouted at me, that's not true. And I said, well, um, true or not, uh, your behavior is inappropriate, so you can sit down or you can leave. Um, in my lighting one class, we were doing a lighting example and my teacher I asked for a volunteer and it happens to be um, another black female student and my teacher didn't know how to light her so he had told her to like move to the side and for another student who was like a white or Latino student and that really shocked me and the fact that the student who was pushed to the side never came back to, to class again. I don't know that I want to fight to be in a place that doesn't want me. Rejection is hard. And you could paint this any kind of way, but I was rejected by a place that I believed in. I had a student who was, she's an alum now, who was the only woman and the only um, black student in a room full of white and Latino men. And she made all of her films about um, black characters, um, as they made all of their films about white characters. At the end of the screening, you know how you have a QA, and a blah, 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 um, there were critique sheets. Um, and we have anonymous feedback forms that people fill out during critique go off of, you know, lighting, cinematography, like technical things, and then they would have a comment section. So I remember sitting down, the lights are about to go out to watch the next film, and I'm like reading through some of them. One of the students wrote, you make too many films about black people, you need to branch out and be more diverse. That the director, meaning me, the director needs to get out of her comfort zone and stop casting black actors. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow instructor said, and I think this is a good piece of advice, he's like, tape that to your monitor. Um, keep it forever. That's the reason you do what you do. He explained to me that not everybody will understand your story, not everybody will understand your journey, but you know, as long as you're truthful to yourself, that's what matters. So my teacher told me that every time I'm about to go make a film, he was like, I need you to read this piece of paper and just go, and go make your stuff. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Quick question, mm -hmm. did any of them represent people of color in their films? No. <laughs> you look upset. You're like, I can't, I just can't believe that someone would say that. Yes, and no, there's diversity, but probably no. Like, it's more the real issues are under the rug. I mean, what's this school? Yeah, black and white people go to this school, but I mean, do I really see us intermingling and really associating with each other? No, that's not true. It's only diverse in that sense, but it's not diverse in the real sense where we're really working in association together. That's not a real thing. And so I think there's this thing about what we say we're going to, we're going to sort of have diversity, of course, we have all these people of color sort of here, right? But all, they're all, um, none, of, none of the richness of their um, unique and individual personhood is focused on in the classroom. They are all essentially expected to assimilate, right? And is that real diversity? I don't think so. And you're not really pushing the model of telling your story here at Columbia. You're more so forced to compromise and take on slack from other students who don't want to do the work. I think that, and I'm also speaking from personal experience, whenever it's just labeled black, African American, ethnic, it's like, oh no, I can't. Why, why is the blackness the threat? What are y'all gonna do? Beat somebody upside the head with your pen? Stab them with your flash drive? <laughs> are they nurturing diversity? Um, I don't think so. I don't. Th well, 
I think that they would like to. I don't think that they know how. And I don't think that it's being taught. I think it's just a situation where, you know, it's a it, it's a place full of artsy people. Artsy people like to think that, you know, they're open-minded. Okay, when you talk to other students of color, how often do you find out they feel that my, my individual, the, the, the person that is me, I want to offer the stories of my time. How often do you feel like your story and you and your ability to tell your story is being nurtured? Is this the environment where that could take place? You know that we're like the heart of your school and you want to tell our stories, then why not help us do a such? Sorry, the school needs to support you guys in terms of funding, in terms of bringing speakers in. Um, people to do master classes. Get Ava DuVernay in here. Ava DuVernay. Ava. Get Issa Rae in here. Get Ryan Coogler in here. Get all three of them in here. Like do a panel on crowdfunding and independent film and whatever. Get all three of them in here. The best thing that they could possibly do is to um, put a little bit, um, put more into this particular organization and organizations like it because that's what's going to be that's going to be what's you know going to help a lot of students uh, the, joining the black Hope society uh, the first meeting i attended i just felt like overwhelmed like i, I didn't know if i fit there like it's the black Hope society so i'm going to be making films and what if i made but my first rough cut of a mip project so someone said don't be intimidated we're basically like family we're going to help each other take care of our projects with the uh with the rebuilding of the Black Film Society, is definitely gonna be able to take this whole thing of diversity to a whole nother level um, because you're now able to get like-minded people who think like you, who you can feel comfortable talking about these issues with and getting it out there in the public so people can see, yeah, mm, you trying to do what you try to, you know, you trying to get the diversity out there, but there's still room for you to improve. So more professors, more clubs, more minority students, black students, saying we need this will definitely get the word out. Uh, I feel like when minds get together and work on things, uh, great things happen always. I mean, when you find black people who come together mentally and, and creatively, beautiful things happen all the time. And uh, whether people notice it or not, things are going to happen, and I think things are going to start changing for the better. So. Very exciting. When we unify, we are powerful and go do your own thing. You don't have to wait on, you know, Columbia or anyone, you know. And yeah, take over the world. <laughs> you guys are here. You guys have an opportunity. You guys have a new leader. And I think you guys are in good hands, you know. And I'm excited about what can happen. One thing that I've been looking to join the Black Film Society for about two years is I got here so I'm so excited to be a part of it now um, and I'm excited for my classmate Raina that she's president because she's awesome um, and I think she's going to take it very far she thinks that she's very strong willed very intelligent so I'm excited to see what the Black Film Society is going to do. I'm Raina McKinley I'm president of Black Film Society as the new president and with the revival of the group I wanted to make sure that one of the first things that we did is be sure that the voices of black film students are getting a chance to be heard. We named the round table Black Sheep because all too often the voices of black film students at Columbia are overlooked and they get lost in the crowd. One of the reasons that the Black Film Society exists, one of the many reasons, is to make sure that that's not happening and so I wanted to make it very clear that our voices will no longer be silenced or ignored. Black Film Society. Better. 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 Go. Wake up, wake up, get out the bed. Learn something new, start using your head. Wake up, wake up, get out the bed. Learn something new, start using your head. I love that feel when, when I, I feel, feel reborn. Refreshed, relaxed, and I feel transformed. 
This goes out to the early raw people that we were equal, so your arms are your ego. With anything you do, you know you deal with consequence. Especially when you're not using your consciousness. I stick it to my roots, barely hopping on my dream. I wanna do my thing when not conformity. I know that I've been missing, I really but kinda slipping up. And since the beginning, recently became a victim. It really woke me up and then opened my eyes. I wanted to revisit, but I had to recognize that this was not me. Who got a stoop to the level of someone less than me with big immaturity? It's all good in the hood, cause it's ugly. Because I have a great pet right in front of me. But at the end of the day, the sun's still gon' shine. You gotta get your soul, I'm gonna get mine. And everything will be fine by the end of the night. Just live your life. But at the end of the day, the sun's still gon' shine. You gotta get your soul, I'm gonna get mine. And everything will be fine by the end of the night. Just live your life. Put your hands up in the air. It's time to wake up. Oh, put your